Good to see your lovely faces in the house this morning. I'm a little sleepy, but you know, it is what it is. It's good to have you here with us this morning. A couple things. This Tuesday is couples night. If you're trying to aspire to be in a, a relationship, if you are in a relationship, my wife and I, as well as the OGs who've been in this game 30 years or more, we're going to have a little conversation. It's going to be dope, man. Again, continue to keep our church family in prayers. It's good to see Sam in the house with his lovely boy. He laid his mom to rest yesterday, so keep him, him and his family in your prayers. And it's good to see a surprise in the house who just celebrated a birthday. My lovely great aunt, Aunt Tilly. She looking good, y'all. She looking so good. Ain't nobody look better than my great aunt. <laughs> you better work, Aunt Tilly. <laughs> yes, sir. That's what loving Jesus gets you. Amen. Hallelujah. So it's good to see her in the house. My lovely family came to surprise us today. It's amazing. Well, I think I got a little something, something to share. Um, I want to talk to you. I want to do something today and give you some tips for a long, give you tips for a healthy, um, successful marriage today. Is that okay? This is something that you can take with you. Um, take with you. If you're dating right now, you got somebody and you're engaged to or you're aspiring, these are the things that you need to consider when you're in a relationship and when you're trying to work towards that. And this is the last week of this, okay? <laughs> We're moving on to something else. All right, so let's do this. Number, Let's go to the first point I want to give you. One of the things that if you want a long-lasting marriage, have longevity, number one, you need to build on the foundation of Jesus Christ. You have to build early on that foundation. Here's why I say that is because life is going to come. And when life comes, you know, everything is good in the beginning. You know what I'm saying? Life is all good. You know, you have your little honeymoon stage and, you know, no one can do no wrong in your eyes. You know what I mean? You're all googly. Oh, oh I can stay in this forever. You're so beautiful. And, oh, God. Oh, my God. I just worship at your feet, all of that stuff. But guess what? That goes. That goes. Now you keep your wonder. Amen. But still, like, life does happen. You know what I mean? Life happens to you. Life happens around you. And so you have to build on the foundation of Jesus Christ. You have to build on that solid foundation. That's why I said you can't be yoked with someone who is not of the same faith as you, who's an unbeliever. It don't work. Because guess what? You're going to be building on a shaky foundation from the get-go. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, you are not always 100%. What do I mean by that? I mean that sometimes you need somebody who can pray you through when you don't know how to get a prayer through yourself. Yeah, that's right. You need somebody who's able to keep you lifted up. You can't be the only one lifting up the family. That's right. That's right. You get what I'm saying? Both of you got to know how to talk to Jesus. Because if you don't, I'm scared. In the days that we live in, you need somebody. I think people so undervalue, yes, put up, they undervalue way, they, they undervalue the importance of having a relationship with Christ. Right. And now we put this on the back end of our checklist mm. for those who want a relationship. Oh, you know, if he said he loved God, that's enough. No, he doesn't. No, it's not. Because there's many gods. You don't know which one they serve in. That's right. I'm telling you, nowadays you got to get very specific. What God you believe in? Who is it? What's his name? Right. Thank you, Phoenix. What's his name? That's right. <laughs> well, I think the universe will slow down, sailor. Huh? You got to be careful of that. Right. You need to build on the foundation. Let's get down to it. How do I know you got? First of all, it, it's better when two people have a strong foundation already and they come together. Amen. You get what I'm saying? Because that is what's going to help you when times come. Now, how do I know this? Let's go to Matthew. Let's go to Matthew chapter 7. Let us all read together. Let's start. Anyone who listens to my teaching, let me hear you. And follows it is wise, like a person who builds a house on solid rock. 25. Though the rain comes and torrents and the floodwaters rise, and the winds beat against that house, it 
So what is Jesus saying to us? This is the words of Jesus, not the words of Brandon. What are the words of Jesus saying? Hey, when the rains and floods come, because they will come, and they will beat against your marriage. Mm. I'm using it in this context. It will beat. Finances will beat against your marriage. Loved ones dying will beat against your house. Mm. Trust and all of that temptation mm. will beat against the house. And guess what? When that stuff comes, what will happen if it's not built on a solid rock? What's going to happen? It's going to collapse. It's going to crash. Guess what? In the beginning, all things, it, you know, you'll have some success and you start da, 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 da. But here's, this is why I tell people, you need to really give it a year before you rush in unless the Lord tells you anyway, otherwise. Because you need to see how they are in the four seasons. Spring, summer, winter, fall. You need to see what they like. How they like in the summer. Are they a hot girl in the summer? What do they do? Huh? You need to see. I'm just being honest. You, you got to see. You got to see. You can't just be looking at this one part of the thing like how they are in the winter. You got to see how they are in a year because guess what? People can only keep a mask on for so long. And you have to be able, let me tell you something, the devil will wait you out. So you got to learn how to discern who is he or she early. Because he will wait you out. He will wait you out. And finally, when you get, then you start seeing somebody get exposed. It's not marriage's fault. Marriage is the institution. People make up a marriage. Marriage is not the fault. It's the fault of us not being able to discern in the meantime what is what and what's going on. You get what I'm saying? So it will collapse when it happens. So that's why I'm saying you got to build on the rock, which is Jesus Christ. That's first. Let's go to number two. Ooh, can we talk for a minute? I just want to know your name. <laughs> Communication. Can we talk for a minute? I need to know more than your name, though. I need to know do you got a criminal record? I need to know what do you got going on with you? Communication. If you want to have a long lasting relationship, this right here, I don't care. It's on every blog you're going to read. It's on every book you're going to read from people who just got married and want to release a book about marriage. You should not buy that book. <laughs> you should not buy that book. I'm serious. You know, this is going to be on everything. Communication right here. A lot of relationships fail because of the lack of communication. The lack thereof of communication. You have to understand communication goes two, is, is two ways, right? It's not just expressing yourself, but it is the ability to also listen. Listen is, the, is, a, part, listening is a part of communication. Yeah. Right, right. So if we're going to be an effective okay. and a longevity with our relationship, we have to have early start of honest a uh, vulnerable conversation with one another. You know what I'm saying? If you are not able to be vulnerable to the person that you're with, then that means you're not going to be able to communicate yourself in the way that you need to in order for them to understand how to love you. So any person you are not open to really be vulnerable with, now that comes over time. But if you realize over time it's not happening, then this cannot go that far. Because you are not, because here's what's going to happen. Oh, well, you know, they're, they're just a good person, but they just don't listen and da, 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 da. The problem becomes is you'll start holding things in if you feel like you can't communicate to that person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
you start being, I mean, you start bubbling up. And then what happens is when you fail to communicate, this is what happens. You, you will hold things in so long and it, it just, you know, just, it, I mean, you're just, you're swelling up. Swelling. You're just swelling up and then the littlest thing happens. The littlest thing, you are going to go off. Why are you going to go off? Because you've been holding this in all the time. See, that's why I don't like you in the first place. Because da, 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 da. I mean, you tell them the whole life story. And the person is looking like, where did this come from? Well, if you would have said something, maybe I would have known. What's that song? Oh, this is my favorite song from Say Something, Something to Believe Again. Thank you, Vernon. <laughs> Communication. You need to say something. If you ain't saying anything, there, that, how can that other person love you? I have to understand communication, man. Fail People fail in this area. When you talk to people in counseling and all of that stuff, well, did you talk to the person? Well, no, I didn't because I don't feel, I, I don't care what you feel. You need to communicate your feelings. Mm -hmm. And if you have communicated your feelings and you haven't seen any action about it, then we'll talk. But if you haven't communicated those things in the first place, wow. then, you, then you're failing. Here's what happens is sometimes we, we, while marriages don't last is because some things that were not commun expectations weren't communicated in the beginning. Wow. Wow. And so the failure to talk about expectations in the beginning is what leads to, uh, the, the, what leads to disaster wow. unless you fix it and fix it early. Yeah. Let's go to the first. Uh, James tells us this. He says, James chapter 1, verse 19, understand this, my dear brothers and sisters, you must all be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to get angry. Don't be so fast to talk all the time. Amen. All right? Human anger does not produce righteous, uh, the righteousness God desires. That, see, you, you get angry. You're not producing the righteousness that God desires because you're not being slow to speak and slow to anger. You're going to go straight to anger. And the reason why you're going straight to anger because you ain't communicated. You got to, and then also, you got to be listening. All right, you talking all of this stuff, but let me tell you something. Some men will not communicate with their wives and hold it in because, you know, they ain't trying, because they don't feel safe that their wife is going to listen to them and listen to what they're trying to say, too. So a lot of times men will be doing stuff and they will be, and you're trying to figure out why they checked out because they don't feel like they could share with you. You haven't provided a safe place. Because the times that they did share, all you talking about, well, you didn't take out the trash and you want to talk about me. <laughs> Am I lying? <laughs> <laughs> you got to communicate both ways. I'm just being honest. I hope that's helping. <laughs> and the people of God said, amen. amen. All right, go to Proverbs 12, 18. There's more with, with communication here. Some people make cutting remarks, but the words of the wise bring healing. Another thing about communication is you got to be wise with your words. Now, let me tell you something. It's easier said than done. You know what I'm saying? Because when you get angry, I know how many of us can, you know, know how to put them words together. You know, I'm saying put them words together. You know, you're very good at it. That's not helping the situation. When you get angry, you got to be watching with your words. You can't hit below the belt. You know what I'm saying? And then not only that in, in intense uh, communication, but in just regular daily stuff, no one should be affirming you more than your spouse. No one should be affirming you more than your spouse. Well, you want to know why? Because if you're not affirming your spouse, uh, 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 and, and putting words of affirmation on them and, <clears throat> and really talking, uh, talking, you know, in, in a way that's bringing life to them, somebody else will. You give a foothold for the devil to, be, to, to bring enticing words to that individual. That's it. That's it. Well, I ain't getting this at home. She just said, thank you. Mm. Or he said, thank you. And I don't get a thank you. 
or or they said this and all of this stuff like that. Those stuff start coming in, and then that's how temptation, the cheat, and all of that stuff comes in because they're tired of being pushed down. There is such a thing as verbal abuse. There is such a thing of verbal abuse. Yeah. And sometimes we have gotten ourselves in relationships that people have abused us verbally with their words. They used to say, sticks and stones may hurt me, but words will never. That was a lie. That's a lie. Words can hurt you harder than what sticks and stones can because it can hurt your soul. <clears throat> and some words, we have not forgot of what has been said to us during our lifetime. And some of us had to go through different healing and God working on our hearts to be healed from some of the things that we heard growing up in our adulthood and all of that stuff of people tearing you down. That's right. That's right. Listen, the world will tear you down enough. You can't be turned down in your home. The home is a peace, should be a place of peace, not a place of chaos. And people thrive in chaos. Those ones you should avoid. Because, listen, you will not get the healing that you need. You come home from a long day of work. I need to hear some healing words. Something that's going to boost my spirit up. My manager then got on my nerves today and said some things that she shouldn't have said. And I may have, you know. But I need some life. <laughs> I need some words that are going to give life. It says, but the words of the wise do what? The words of the wise bring healing. Yeah. 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 It brings healing. You don't understand that you're to hear certain, you know, everybody can tell you something, but it's not until your spouse tells it to you. Wow. Everybody can say the same thing that your spouse say, but it's because she or he said it to you that made the difference. Wow. You don't understand, man. If, you, if you're watching online and you're in the room, start changing up your words. You'll start seeing how people react. Brothers, you want to see your, your wife? Start changing up your words. words. Woman, you want to see the man be consistent with handling things? Change up your words. 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 You'll start seeing a result. Amen. They'll start, yeah, I'm going to do that. <laughs> I will do that. Be on the best behavior too. Amen. Amen. The next thing I want to give you is trust. If you're going to have a longevity relationship, you got to build it on trust. If there is no trust, you don't have anything. Here it is. There's three levels of trust. You ready for it? The first level is fidelity, meaning that a married person must be able to trust that his or her spouse will remain faithful in the marriage. So let's build it on fidelity that both of us are trusting one another. You ain't going to step out. I ain't going to step out. Amen. All right. We in this thing. My wife and I had this saying before we got married. You may think it's crazy or not. <laughs> the only way out of this is in a box. <laughs> Meaning that one of us going to have to die before this is over. Huh? Thank you. <laughs> Seriously. The only way out of this is if one of us die before, he, before uh, one of That's the only way. And my wife has very strict rules about remarrying and all of that stuff. <laughs> you better not marry anybody. I will haunt you from <laughs> My mom is laughing too. She got strict rules. <laughs> so she ain't gonna let another hussy marry my daddy. <laughs> oh, my house. <laughs> <laughs> and she'd be like, you, you bet not let your daddy do a deal. <laughs> That's all right. Second level of trust, my friends, are honesty. You got to be honest with one another. A husband or wife should be able to trust that his or her partner will be honest. Come on, you got to be honest. You got to be able to tell the truth to one another. You know what I mean? Because, guys, I mean, if you're going to be, if we're, you're doing life together. If you're going to do life with someone and you can't be honest, then you, then we, why are we doing this? Why are we doing this? We should be honest. Now, honest with a season of grace, amen? Yeah. But we must be honest. Yeah. Yeah. All right? You know, I'm about to joke, make a joke, but listen, 
If I can't be honest with you and say your breath stink, then your breath stink. Go and wash. You got to be honest. I'm being I'm like being very serious. Like, and that's why sometimes, you know, sometimes couples talk about, you know, their intimate life and I get into that. You got to be honest in that too. Tell him or her what you want. Yeah. Call them up. <laughs> Teach them along the way. Build the trust yeah. of intimacy. What do you say? <laughs> what was that phrase? <laughs> Yeah, teach me how to love my music soul child. Amen. <laughs> got to be honest. You got to create us. Play a little bit of this. <laughs> like, you got to be honest, man. That's what I think sometimes is fail. Like, we don't know how to be honest with people anymore. We, we, we really don't. And you don't have to be rude to be honest. Sometimes people don't. Let me tell you something. Confrontation is needed in relationships. Healthy confrontation, because healthy confrontation will help us to be able to move ahead. There are times, you know, again, I can only speak from my experience in marriage. You know what I mean? My wife and I has tried to build a trust in a trusting environment of honesty with one another. Babe, I don't feel like you doing da 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 da. You know, she say, you know, I'm gonna be honest with you. If you don't have somebody who can be honest with you to help you to help push you towards your destiny, then you, you, can't, you, 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 you can't be around them. It's not going to work in that type of relationship. And we can be honest with one another. Well, I feel like you're not being consistent enough. You know, if you can pull that up, then we can do this and then handle that and handle that. And then guess what? We start working together and pushing each other to it. And then we start seeing our goals go down. Like, all right, we checked that. We got that done. Because it's being honest with one another. Yo, you lacking. Handle the business that you need to handle. Yeah. Let's do it. What we doing? We got to build honesty. If you feel a person ain't doing well with the finances, talk to them. Hey, let's try to rearrange how we're doing it here. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? Let's be honest so that we can lead to push us to the destiny that God has for us. So that's the second level. Third level of trust is, has to do with behaviors. A husband or wife should generally want to trust that his or her spouse will behave in a certain way toward him or her. Not only trusting how they will behave towards one another, but you need to trust how they are going to be with other people. What do I mean by that? Is that, number one, when you step out the house, you represent each other. So I don't need somebody representing me out here on these streets who, if I'm kind to people, they need to be kind to people. Yeah. I need somebody who I can trust that can handle themselves in certain environments. Yeah. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, there's certain people you can't take to certain environments. That's right. Being honest. You be like, you. I, I, let, me, let me stop here. here. Everybody has different friend groups, right? Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. Everybody, right? Yeah. So in your friend groups, right? You know, these are the ratchet ones. I ain't taking them <laughs> to the gala. <laughs> I can't have them in birth. Ooh, those scrimps. I know. I, I, can't do that. Mm -mm. Yeah, that we, those are the type of spots we go to leading in there. You need some of the other friends groups that got it, you know, they're a little bit more polished. You know what I'm saying? A little bit more polished can represent themselves. Talk with a nice business acumen, a nice vernacular when you need it. You get what I'm saying? You have to trust and be that. And then also you need to trust that he and her is not so flirtatious out here in these streets. Huh? You got to trust that they know how to when they, somebody approaches them. Bam, brother. There it is. Oh, you're just so, oh, you look so handsome. <laughs> All right. God bless you. Keep it on moving. God bless you. This one's taken, amen. I can help you find someone, but I can't help you. Huh? Shut it down. Don't give no room to the enemy. Oh, you just look, ah, hee, hee, ha, ha. <laughs> Keep it moving. Oh, see, cause to these days, you got to be real careful because you just say, oh, you look nice today. 
oh, I do. And I, listen, I'm just being nice. Now, there's a difference between being nice and being flirtatious. Because if you take it even further than that, oh, yeah, I just did. Oh, yeah, I can see that. And, oh, 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 roll your slop. Your, stop your old hair, brother. Same there. And then people, let me also warn all the married couples or those of you who've gotten engaged, let me also warn you. You would think, oh, man, being single was so hard. I'm telling you, being, being in a relationship is harder because you look attractive. It seems to me that people want what they don't, what they can't have. You look more attractive. People start hitting you up. Oh, you're in a relationship now. Trying to test. Yeah. Trying to test you to see if you really committed. Yeah. I'm telling you, if you notice any time you've ever been just in a relationship with somebody, you start seeing exes come through, or not even just exes, just people in general want to talk to you. I'm like, uh, I'm in a relationship. And then nowadays people say, well, I don't care. You know, it's 2023. That's what it means. I'm telling you, other women, people be, they, uh, what do it mean? We can all get a three and they'll go. They, they, that's how people are now. Got to be careful. Sick world we're living in. Sick. <laughs> it really is. You have to understand that you have to trust where that individual is. I don't have to worry about my wife when she's out here in these streets. I'm, I'm content. I don't have to worry. If you worrying about having to check phones and all of that stuff like that, you're paranoid. And you're paranoid because you don't really trust them. And let me also say this. If you haven't healed from prior relationships and you take your prior relationships into the next one, that ain't going to help you neither. Because if this person has proven to be trustworthy, but you still paranoid and you got PTSD from the last one, you going to bring that in there and they're like, I need to know all your IDs, all of this stuff. I have a phone check every Friday and all of this stuff. Come on, man. Leave that in the past. But if you already sniffing that something is wrong in the air, then you need to leave. Just saying. Something to think about. So that's the third level of trust. No, number four. Number four. This is part one. You got to get part two on couples night. Um, we're going to get a little bit deeper. Um, respect. Um, let me give you the, the, this. You. Respect is the way a person treats something he or she values. If something is highly valued, a person will treat it with honor and dignity. Verse Peter 2.17. Read it all together. Respect everyone and love the family of believers. Fear God and respect the king. Peter says, respect everyone. Hold everyone to a value. Now, here it is with your spouse. Let me be honest with you. you there has to be a level of respect. So, like, you will not value, if you don't really respect it, you won't have high value for it. You want to know a lot of times the reason why you should avoid one night stands or not give it up the first day that you date because that diminishes your value in the person's eyes. Let me be honest with you. Let me tell you something, brothers. We know the conversations we didn't have with other brothers. <laughs> Just being honest. Text message to reds, all of that good old stuff. Bro, she gave it up the first night. I don't know. <laughs> See, y'all ain't ready for this honesty. This is the truth. Your value goes down a little bit. You get on another value system that I'm not going to talk about. But it ain't the value system of one of a wife. You get on the value. Oh, there's value there. Just not one to marry you. I like this church. <laughs> you get on a value, you on a value system. But ain't that one. What I'm telling you now is that in the relationship, there has to be a level of respect, the high value that we placed on each other. The treat people, to treat each other with dignity and honor. Somebody don't need to be in a house where they don't feel respected. That their opinion don't feel respected. They don't feel honored. 
Do something nice. Let them, let them know that you love them. Let it do, be done with your actions. That's a level of showing honor to one another. Let them know. Just give them flowers just because, yo, like I was thinking about you today. Send a text. Because sometimes, here's what I've learned, known in my, in, again, in my little experience of marriage. I'm just giving my experience. My wife and I, we would, you know, it, it was a transition because we would be FaceTime and texting all that stuff. And then when we moved in together, when we got married, you know, it's a little different. Because I see you every day. All right. But you cannot. Now that I see you every day, I can't treat that for granted. You can't take that for granted. And then you don't honor people as they should. Let me tell you something now, brothers, how you start. You better continue to be consistent at it, because guess what? It will be brought back up. I started, you know, you know how you get her is how you need to keep her. You feel me? I started out, you know, on the first day, I said, listen, I'm going to give you a rose for every year we be married. She was like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. All right? And so, <laughs> and so <laughs> second year came around. I did it first year. Second year, we did something else, but I forgot a rose. I remember the, well, what happened to every year we was going to be together. <laughs> Get that room. Let me tell you again how you start. It's how you need to be consistent. And what did I do? I went out, got that rose. <laughs> so I could be a man of integrity <laughs> to honor what I said I was going to do. Some of these, man, some of y'all be big balling early. I said, man, man. I feel sorry when they get married. <laughs> Cause you gonna have to keep that up, player. <laughs> you gotta give your well, you gotta give your spouse something to look forward to, amen. You can't bring out all of the bag of tricks out of your pocket. Gotta be you gotta you gotta pace yourself. Jesus. <laughs> Especially the youngins. They you know, I got you know, uh, whatever. Number five. The youngins. Intimacy. That is, let me tell you something. If you're going to have a longevity relationship, it needs to understand that intimacy needs to be a thing. Now, I'm not going to talk about sex I already did that, but that's a great form of intimacy. But there's other ways of being intimate, amen? Right. You know why? Because this is about growing old together. Yeah. 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 And so you have to learn the love languages of your spouse. Yeah. One of the things, again, I can only talk from my experience because I'm not sitting here to talk to you like I'm a guru and I'm writing a book tomorrow about marriage or relationships. There's enough of that out there. But what I'm saying is, is that you need to learn how to love. My wife loves cuddling. She does. She likes to be cuddled. You know what I mean? And so I don't mind cuddling. It's just the issue is, is when your feet and your legs are cold, don't be trying to cuddle next to me when I, when I try to go to sleep. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I don't mind, you know. I don't mind cuddling. <laughs> well, get warm first. And then we can... <laughs> well, you know, and then another... <laughs> That's a word. You be sleep. The other day it happened. You be sleep. And, you know, she get next to you, then what, cold? I'm like, oh, my God. What is this cold? <laughs> Let me go my legs. Like, girl, you better go over there and warm up first. <laughs> Intimacy. You got to learn what your love, what, you, what, your, what, what your spouse loves. And both of you have to learn each other. Why? It's because this is about the long haul. Being intimate with one another, to going out, enjoying each other's company, keeping the fire going, you know what I mean? Keeping dating your wife, going out, just going out, walking around. The other day we did something fun where it was the way we went, uh, we had a doctor's appointment. We went out to the Lake Elkhorn up here and we just walked around and looked at the lake and stuff like that. You know what I mean? Intimate times, moments with one another. You know what I'm saying? You have to spend that time with 
one another. If you're not spending quality time, I'm trying to tell you that you're going to have some rifts. You are. You need quality time. I can recall of a moment, of a moment, again, I can only talk about myself, is that when we were putting this thing together and I was taking my time and all of that stuff like that, being I was busy for a little moment of time, and my wife like, I, you know, we ain't going out on a date. I ain't going, we haven't gone out in a second. See, you need somebody to remind you. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? Absolutely. You need somebody to remind you. You know, I, seeing my mom and dad for over 30 years in a marriage, let me tell you something. Mom will remind. Right. She will let him know. Absolutely. We going out somewhere. <laughs> <Absolutely>. <laughs> She gonna let it up. We need a staycation, something, anything. But that's how you have see a marriage work for over thirty years. You have to understand. You got to keep it going, man. You listen. Just because you're getting older, don't mean that you gotta live like it. Still have fun. May not can't do certain things you used to, but you can still find something to enjoy and have fun. As life progresses, your interests change. Both of your interests change. What y'all like today won't be what you like in the future. What y'all find amusement in today, you may not find amusement in today. This is the beauty of covenant. Can I help you understand something? Marriage is not a contract. It's a covenant. I hear people talk about oh, the paper. It ain't about no paper. It's a covenant. It's two people in covenant with one another. And the only way this covenant breaks is in a box. <laughs> Till death do us part. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? You have to spend those times of intimacy because there are important for <clears throat> there are important moments. Life is precious. And you have you don't know when one another is called to be with the Lord or not. You're not never going to know that time. But while we're living now, yeah. we're going to use up all of this time. Pastor, I don't got a lot of money. I don't care if you don't got a lot of money. Find something little. It don't matter. Walk around. There's a lot of free stuff that you can get into around here, surprisingly. It's out here. Find something. Find those moments, those little moments to really enjoy one another's company. Find those moments. Don't be so busy trying to chase a bag and all of this stuff where you forget to live. We're not just partners and just roommates. We're here to live together. We're here to do life with one another. What well, don't be so busy? Oh, we gotta pay this bill. We don't got we gotta pay pay. All right, okay, we understand that. They're gonna get paid, but we're gonna pay ourselves first. That's right. <laughs> I'm not gonna say anything else about that, but listen, we're gonna go treat ourselves. Guess what? We're going to treat ourselves. Why? It's because that's what keeps the flame, the love, continue to burn. It's the level of intimacy and love for one another. Everyone wants to be loved. You get what I'm saying? Now, everyone has different ways of how they want to be loved, but everybody wants to be loved. And so learn how to love one another. As I stated early in the beginning, Marriage is not on your, about your happiness alone. That's right. That's right. It's not. That's right. That's right. It's about each other coming together, building a home based on, uh, 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 based on teamwork, teamwork and valuing, how each, valuing each other's happiness. Yeah. Because when two become one, we need to now figure out what is going to make this, our relationship be happy and successful. Not only your happiness, but the happiness of one another. Some of us, if we be honest, you're too selfish to be married. You are. Because you're not willing to let go of yourself. Marriage is about letting go of yourself. Not saying forsaking yourself in the sense that, you know, it ain't, you know well, I guess it's what they want. No, it's about both people forsaking themselves for the one common goal. From the, to, to, to glorify God through the vehicle of marriage. You get what I'm saying? That's how you need to view marriage. 
Don't be on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, and some of these podcasts trying to tell you all of this stuff. And it ain't that deep. I promise you it's not that deep. People try to make this deeper than what it is. It's not that deep. If you just honor God, communicate, intimacy, respect, trust with one another, we're going to have a good run. So however long the Lord has us to be alive. And you got, that's what you have to look forward to. So when people like, I ain't getting married, we're going to keep doing what we're doing now. Well, you don't have anything. You have no commitment. You have no serious commitment. No, your boyfriend and girlfriend is not a serious commitment. It ain't until you really stand before God and say, listen, this is a real commitment. Oh, we got kids together. Who cares? That ain't, we're committed to the kid. We haven't committed to each other. That's a difference. <laughs> ain't one at church. <laughs> That's different. Our commitment to our child is not our commitment to each other. Once we have a child, it's about we committed to the well-being of that kid. But we and you and I have nothing. There's no commitment there. <laughs> no serious thing that you actually want to make this an actual home. We're talking about a real home. <laughs> the Luther Vandross. <laughs> Aha! And so you have to understand to understand that, listen, as we come to a close, I'm finished. I ain't holding you no longer. As we come to a close, relationship playbook. Number one, I want you to know it's not that deep. Number two, I want you to understand to be open. Be open to, to the possibilities of what may be out there for you. You know what I'm saying? But as you're doing that, learn how you want to be loved first before you go into anything. You get what I'm saying? Learn how you want to be loved. So that you are not telling, so no one is telling you how you should be loved. You get what I'm saying? Get you and embrace your singleness to the couples and the married ones in the room. We'll talk more on Tuesday, but what I'm telling you is now enjoy the company of one another. I'm not marrying somebody. I don't enjoy their company. If I got to see you every day, I got to enjoy your company. I got to enjoy to want to be with you and not dread, dread to come home. You get what I'm saying? In this relationship thing, honor one another. Respect one another. Look out for each other. You got my back, I got yours. We riding this thing till the wheels fall off. Or riding this until one of God calls us home. That's just how it's going to work. Or God raptures us together. Amen. I'll take the rapture. To be caught up. I'll take it. But honor one another. Respect one another. Treat everyone with love. Why? It's because this is what's going to bring glory to God. So that other people can see, hey, marriage actually does work. Look at them. People in the, in the church need to see other relationships that people are thriving. Loving one another. You know what I'm saying? And, and other married couples that you can learn from along the way. Because we all in a community with one another. And we all need to learn, oh, what worked for you? Not trying to, use, and one of the things we'll talk about on Tuesday is the danger of comparison. Don't compare your relationship to nobody else. See, what I learned, what people like to do is they read a couple of books from some people who just recently divorced. I'm not telling nobody names. <coughs> Good, but I'm just saying. They read those books and, you know, they read these books and then they're like, see, that's how we need to be loving each other right there. No, 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 no. What worked for them or did not, don't work, will not work for you. Y'all are two different people with two different personalities. You can look at the, what the principles of a person does. Don't mean that you follow that. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. That's a difference. Learn, but don't be like, well, we need to be like them. See, you ain't hugging my hand. Hugging me like they hugging them. You ain't holding my hand. Don't do that. Please, save yourself. Stand your feet. <laughs> We're going home. Amen. We start a new series this Sunday. Next Sunday. <clears throat> 
Let me pray for you. Lord God, I pray right now for every person in the room, every person that's single, every person that's in a loving relation in a couple in a relationship right now. God, cover them in the name of Jesus. Cover all of my singles in the room in the name of the Lord Jesus. God, let them embrace their singleness, oh God, and let them learn to love you and love them and learn and, and as they're loving you, that they understand the love that you want them to have for themselves because of how you see them today. For all my married couples, Lord God, we pray, God, that strong relationships, oh God, in the name of Jesus, continue to bind them together, oh God, so that it may get glorify you and give honor to your name today in the name of Jesus, oh God. Lord God, we just ask, oh God, that you would have your way today and that you would be get all the glory that's due your name, oh God. We give your name praise in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you're not saved, I want to offer you Jesus today. I want you to know that if you don't know who Jesus is, you're lost. And you need to know who he is, that you are a sinner. And guess what? You don't have to be anymore. Jesus came that you may have life and have it more abundantly. Listen, that he's not somebody who's a mythological character or somebody was made up. No, he actually existed. He lived, there's different articles, there's different uh, books that have been written about him by different authors that are not even the ones of the Bible. He was, he is real and he is the living God. And so I offer you Jesus today. This is the gospel that, listen, you're lost, separated from God, but Jesus came that you may not be separated from the Father anymore, and that you may be reconciled back unto God, meaning that you will not have, no longer will have enmity with God, meaning that you will no longer be at war with God. You will have now peace with him today. And now your name is written, will be written in the Lamb's book of life. If you want to rededicate your life back to Christ, you can do that today. It's not that you... God drifted away. You drifted away. He's still here with open arms saying, come back home. Lord God, and not, not only that, if you want to make TCF your church, you say, hey, this crazy guy, I love him to be my pastor. I love the pastor you. But as I always say, I'm more concerned about you being connected to Jesus than you being connected to a church home because there's people who are in church who are still not going to make it in because they never made Jesus the Lord of their lives. And so with every head bowed, eye closed, every person in this room and every person that's watching online, it's not the prayer that we're about to say that makes you save. It's a real genuine repentant heart that, com that com uh, com transfers you, oh God, transforms your heart into uh, accepting Jesus today. And so everybody, let's repeat this prayer after me so that no one feels left out. Lord Jesus, I repent of my sins. I ask you now to save my soul. I acknowledge that you died on the cross, that you were buried, and that you rose again just for me. And I want to make you the Lord over my life today. In Jesus' name, amen. If you said that prayer for the very first time, fill out that connection card or you can meet me down here and one of our pastors will show you the way of salvation. Amen. If you're glad to be alive, come on and give God great praise right there. I'm alive.